I'm Tad, you're watching Tips for Technicians. Today I'm teaching you demand defrost control basics. This is a heat pump behind me, and it's actually a dual fuel, so it has a gas side for the auxiliary backup. But let's talk about defrost controls. Don't forget to subscribe, and let's get started. These are the components required for demand defrost to work. Two sensors. This is the ambient outdoor sensor, measures outdoor air, and you check resistance using ohms with a multimeter um, to diagnose this, okay? There's another sensor. This is the coil sensor. This is on one of the U-bends of the outdoor coil. It has two wires just like the outdoor ambient sensor, and you measure resistance using a multimeter. You measure ohms. There's a resistance chart. Uh, manufacturers, different brands have different charts. You'll have to check your installation instructions. Usually they're online. If you need more information, just uh, comment below. Definitely find those resistance charts so you can properly make the check here. They're gonna read a certain resistance based off a certain temperature they read, okay? There's a chart for that. So this is the defrost board. And it looks like you can see these resistors are a little brown here. This board was definitely bad. And if I shorted the test pins together, see there's test pins here. You short these together with a little screwdriver or whatever you got, jumper wire. Um, short these test pins, it'll force it into a defrost. And then these are the uh, spades for the wires for the coil. So ambient sensor is placed here, coil sensor is placed here. That's the coil sensor. Again, got a little bulb. And this is the ambient sensor, okay? This is your low voltage inputs for the board. This is your pin. There's a different setting uh, for each model number. You're going to find in your installation instructions a different pin setting for different unit. Be aware of that. This is your reversing valve. Two spades here for your reversing valve. Uh, there's two wires for reversing valve. Your pressure switches are in series and there, there's a low pressure and a high pressure switch inside this unit. This has to be closed, okay, for it to initiate defrost. This is your M terminal. M terminal is important because this is the output to the contactor. And I'm gonna show you on the wiring diagram this, uh, but first let's just talk. You have to have common and yellow. You're going to measure uh, voltage with your multimeter. You're going to make sure you have 24 volts there. Um, you're going to make sure your pin's in the right position. You're going to make sure your resistances are red and you've looked at your chart and referenced the chart for the temperature reading per the resistance. If it's just about in line, then those will be good. You're going to short across this test pin and it should go into defrost. Regular defrost happens when this sensor, the coil sensor, is at least 32 degrees or below. The defrost takes 13 minutes on this specific model. It lasts for 13 minutes or whenever this sensor reaches a higher temperature. I think this is 39 degrees or 40. So it's around 10 degrees higher. Then it'll come out of defrost. It's a demand uh, defrost, um, but it works off of the time and temperature. So it's really basic. This is a relay that controls the condenser fan motor. The outdoor fan motor that's on top, that blows the air through the outdoor coil. Uh, this just breaks the circuit for the outdoor fan. When this goes into defrost, there's a few things that happen. Outdoor fan is open and it doesn't run. Then your, now your relay opens. Your uh, compressor is energized, okay? It stays running. And your reversing valve is energized. So it throws a gas in the outdoor coil to defrost it. And it lasts a certain amount of time. You need to make sure you test this, uh, the pins. Let's take a look at the unit. And if you guys have any more questions about demand defrost, what you should check, just definitely comment below. So yeah, this is all the wires. That's the M terminal it goes to this contactor. And then, then you have your See, ambient sensor, coil sensor. See if we go down here. Uh, this is our ambient sensor plugged in, and it's underneath in the base panel of the unit, looks like here. And it's out of sunlight, so that's very important. Uh, then you've got, see, you've got gas, because this is a dual fuel. So it uses its backup is not uh, heat strips, it's actual gas. This is your outdoor coil here, and your sensor is on one of these U-bends. I've already put the panel back on. I've already replaced this and tested it. Works pretty good, but I just wanted to show you guys the basics so that if you have a call, you know what you're doing, you know what to look for. This is the wiring diagram. I'm gonna talk just a little bit about the wiring diagram as well. Just let you see how it's all put together. Pressure switch goes through the low pressure. 
in the high pressure. They're wired in series, so you can check voltage across this. You can go from your uh, common to check across both of those. You can go from your common to the M, okay, because the M goes where? Where did I say the M goes? It goes to the coil of the contactor. This is the contactor here, L1, L2. L2 and T2 has a normally open contact. L1 and T1 normally closed. You go back here, you have your ambient sensor, and uh, you'll take those wires off, measure resistance. Isolate the sensors both before you measure resistance. There's your test pins. Let's go ahead and turn this on, simulate a defrost, and I think I've talked enough. Probably talked your heads off, guys, but I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it gives you some insight into how demand defrost works. The outdoor coil temperature must be at, below, at or below 32 degrees before the defrost cycle begins. Heat pump operates in heating mode until the combination of outdoor ambient and outdoor coil temperature initiate a defrost cycle. Shorting across the pins now. Has to be nine seconds before it will hear that. And now the gas is going, coming on. Outdoor fan has stopped should come right back out though because the coil temperature is above 39 degrees. See, it just came back out of defrost. Now that variable speed fan starting back up. Prep Magnificente. Magnificente weather. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful where I live. You like it. Oh my! Sir, please slow down. Crazy man. Talking about the back roads in Tennessee, guys. Gotta be careful. See you later. I hope this is beneficial for you and that you learned something today um, going over the basics of demand defrost controls. If you have any more questions, comment below and do not forget to subscribe. Defrost initiated. Outdoor fan stops. Compressor stays running and now it's back on. But you heard the switch. <laughs>